Welcome to B2B Marketers on the Mission, a podcast for B2B marketers that helps you to question the conventional, think differently, disrupt your industry, and take your marketing to new heights. Each week, we talk to B2B marketing experts who share inspirational stories, discuss their thoughts on trending topics, and provide useful marketing tips and recommendations. And now, here's your host and co-founder of I'm Like Consulting, Christian Klepp. Welcome, everyone, to this episode of the B2B Marketers in the Mission podcast, where you get your weekly dose of B2B marketing insights. This is your host, Christian Klepp, and today I am joined by someone who is on a mission, and that mission is to help B2B companies to plan, strategize, and get the most out of their marketing budget through data-driven initiatives. So coming to us from Houston, Texas, Dimitri Kustov, welcome to the show. Well, thank you so much for having me. I'm very glad to be here. It's great to be connected, Dimitri, and uh, I'm really looking forward to this conversation because, uh, I mean, you can't really talk about B2B marketing initiatives and not throw in something that's data-driven and measurable, right? So um, so let's uh, let's get this conversation started. This is going to be fun. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So, Dimitri, among other things, you are an accomplished entrepreneur. Uh, And you're an expert in digital marketing for B2B. But for the purpose of this conversation, let's narrow down the topic to improving paid advertising for B2B marketing. So talk to us about why you think B2B marketers should include uh, paid advertising in the marketing mix. Okay, so paid advertising is quite a broad uh, part of digital marketing. And there are many facets that you can kind of put under paid advertising arena. Yeah, typically, whenever people talk about paid advertising, most would associate, most business owners associate with Google ads, but that's not necessarily true. Really, technically, any, any, any advertising that you pay for that happens online would fall under the paid advertising channel. And uh, whenever you, we talk about marketing strategy, whenever we talk about uh, paid advertising, whenever we talk about any online marketing initiatives, you, in a sense, you have to uh, try and test everything. Uh, if you have not done Google ads before, try, test it, make sure you, you record all the data. And uh, what, what we preach is data-driven marketing. So if you don't have data, don't trust your gut. That's our saying, don't trust the gut, trust the data. And you need to make sure that whenever you do all those tests for different initiatives, Google ads, Bing ads, Facebook ads, any any other social media ads, sometimes you can even test paid advertising on third, third party websites. Maybe there is a online magazine or forum that is specifically for your industry and they have a lot of a lot of visitors to that website and they have like sponsored spots or something absolutely test it try it and again the most important part is to record the data so that you can make decisions about ROI return on investment to compare all those channels and different platforms between each other which one works the most for you the best for you and uh, so on. So yeah, uh, don't don't have to just uh, uh, kind of stay only in one platform. Try try everything and make sure that uh, that none of the data is lost. Yeah, no, that's absolutely right. Uh, would you also say that? Um, would it be fair enough to say you probably should start small and then with fewer initiatives rather than spreading yourself too thin across different channels? Of course, yeah. So yeah. you start one by one, and let's say let's say you start with Google Ads. Of course, make sure that the budget that you are testing with is not too low. That will and can dilute the data and results because if you're not getting enough of results, enough of metrics, then you're not going to be able to make the decision whatsoever. Because let's say you got only like you know, 10 visits a month from that initiative and there were no leads, well, you can't really make any decision. So make sure that your budget is high enough, but you don't have to go overboard either. And you do it one by one. So let's say you start with Google ads and take, I don't know, let's say $1,000, $2,000, whatever it is, test it, see how it works. If you see that it's working, 
the return on, on investment is positive and it's actually bringing results, you can keep doing it. And then you add one more and then you start testing that one. If you see that the first initiative did not work, then you stop that initiative and move the budget into another one. And this way, it's kind of easier to measure everything uh, because you only have to worry about just one channel. And it also, especially for smaller businesses, budgets are uh, typically low. So you don't have to worry about worry too much about not having enough budget. So uh, that's that's going to also help you with planning and strategizing and just budgeting for a quarter or, or a year or whatever time period you base your strategy on. Yeah, that's absolutely right. Um, you actually got me thinking about another question, which I thought I'd throw into the mix here. But how yes. do you think paid advertising can help uh, what B2B marketers are doing, uh, say, organically. Right. So all of the marketing, including traditional marketing, really any marketing initiative, all of them should be working together to bring you towards closer to a goal, business goal you have. In that regard, what you have to think about is... Uh, let's say let's say it's a content campaign. So you created some kind of downloadable PDF, maybe some kind of awesome blog, whatever that is. Maybe you, you came up with a new product, whatever it is. You always have to think about how all of the marketing channels can work together in the best way possible to promote that new piece of content or new, new product or whatever it is. So whenever we talk about organic uh, results is yes, SEO. So <clears throat> uh, let's say you created a content piece and it's very much SEO optimized and it starts ranking uh, organically for certain key phrases. Well, you can definitely help with to offset initial growth with paid advertising. Maybe you post it on social media and you spend a few hundred dollars on promoting that post so that you get exposure quicker. And maybe you spend uh, on a very specific targeting on Google ads for that blog post. Uh, maybe be before you rank for that post organically, because if your industry is very, very competitive, let's say, um, I don't know, like ice cream, right? Uh, if you if you're in some kind of uh, production of ice cream, there is so many there's so many competitors and those competitors are big and they have huge budgets. So it's going to be very difficult to compete with them right off the bat in organic search because they have so much budget behind it. So while you are developing your brand, while your organic rankings are growing, you can offset that delay by spending uh, spending on ads basically so that's how all of that works together okay okay um that's fair enough um you brought up some of these already in the past couple of minutes but um you know moving on to the next question it's talking about the common mistakes and misconceptions you've seen out there when it comes to paid advertising specifically for b2b and uh you know what b2b marketers should do to address these there are a couple really big ones, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and I'll try to cover a few. So one of the biggest ones probably is that PPC, paid advertising, is here to save the world. I strongly dis disagree with that. When you look at pretty much any, especially online marketing channels or activities, paid advertising is typically in 90% percent or more is going to be the most expensive channel per lead and it kind of in, in, uh, when, when you don't know the ins and outs when you don't think about it too deeply it it sounds like it should be the best channel because it's in a sense pay to play you want people to go to your website whenever only whenever they click on your website on, on your ad on your link that's the only time you pay. But when you kind of start thinking deeper, when you start analyzing it, the pay-to-play model is 
not future proof. So if you start paying tomorrow, stop paying tomorrow, you're not going to get any traffic. Unlike, and uh, unlike, uh, let's say, organic search or email marketing or anything else, because all of those other initiatives, they are, they have this snowball effect. You, if you rank organically on the first page, most likely you're going to be on that first page for quite a while before other competitors takes you, takes you over. So all of the budget you have invested before, it works for you in the future. So unlike paid ads, you all literally pay to play. Let's say email marketing, you, as you send emails, as you, say, as you create email marketing campaigns, it grows your audience. You gather new emails. It builds up brand awareness and so on and so on. So that also kind of works for the future. And uh, that's probably one of the biggest misconceptions. It is probably definitely the easiest channel, the paid advertising, because it's kind of very easy to understand. It's very easy to see results very quickly. Uh, you know, if you spend $100 tomorrow, do you get sales for over $100? And in that regard, it's quite nice, but you have to, especially in the world of business, we're not here for one day. We're all here for uh, at least, you know, maybe a decade or longer uh, with some kind of exit strategy. But the idea is to build the future. The, the idea is to invest in the future. So that's probably one of those misconceptions that most, uh, most not data-driven marketers and business owners make. Uh, another one is, or it's, it's a whole suite of mistakes and misconceptions, is that especially nowadays when the online, the digital world is talking about AIs, you know, artificial, artificial intelligence and algorithms are very, very smart and all that. And from there, there's this misconception is that Google or whatever platform you use for advertising knows better. And therefore there is a lot of these automated campaigns. There's a lot of automated strategies and you kind of set and forget. And Google automatically will do everything for you and they will do it in the best way. That is incorrect from all of the data we see from everything, all the tests we do, that is incorrect. And when you start thinking about it, it also makes sense. Google's goal is to make as much money as they can. So in, in a sense, it's much better for them if you spend more money. So what they're going to do, and again, if, if, if uh, you think about uh, kind of the return on investment approach, even on Google's end, and if, if you think about those types of corporations, they, they're going to do the least they, they can to keep you. So if your uh, return on investment is basically like, let's say, if you spend $100, as long as you make $102, you're probably going to be spending money or whatever that plus margin, right? So let's say like $110. So that is gonna be enough for Google to say, well, you know what? Your ROI is positive, so you should spend more. They're not gonna go and do it. Not, they're not gonna to try to get $300 out of your $100 spend. So that's one of those huge things that I hate about automated campaigns. And uh, I'm a believer that there is a place for it, definitely. Uh, but in general, I prefer a lot of things done manually, or at least in the beginning, you have to control it as much as you can. And as you get more data, as the platforms get more data, then you can trust, start trusting the automated features uh, only on certain campaigns, only on certain parts. And even then you have to monitor it very, very closely and even still do adjustments manually. Yeah, no, those are some really great points. And I think, uh, you know, going back to what you said earlier, um, 
it, to a certain degree, the, all this technology and the AI, it has made certain um, uh, people complacent, right? And, uh, right. you know, as you've rightfully pointed out, um, this still requires a very strong, uh, like not, not, not just human aspect, but like, uh, people to be actively involved in the campaigns. You know, you still need to, you right. still need to monitor the results. You still need to iterate and adjust accordingly. Right. Of course. Yes. Yeah. All right. Um, this is an opportunity to hopefully highlight a case study of yours, but like talk to us about uh, a challenge that you and your team have uh, managed to solve in the past uh, 12 months or so. Uh, we have this client that we've been working for uh, three, two, two and a half years or so now, specifically for paid advertising. And uh, the challenge was they're a fairly big company. Uh, they're, they're serving customers on a national scale. They have a very good, solid budget of um, um several hundred thousand dollars in in, ad, in advertising marketing budget so they are definitely not a small client and they have been fairly successful with most of their marketing uh, initiatives and uh, when they came to us their goal was to not necessarily fix things but to make it better and this is the types of project that I really like. I'm a huge data nerd. Uh, I, I, I love all of the nitty gritty stuff. And, uh, you know, when you kind of look at something that is working and the common saying is, if it's not broke, if it's not broken, don't touch it type of thing. Yeah. I don't really believe in that. Uh, there's always room for improvement and, uh, that's one of those case studies, one of those, one of those uh, clients that we were able to help that at the first glance, it looks like, you know what, your return on investment is 200%. You're set, don't touch it, it works. But then we started digging, digging and digging. And over basically a course of the year and a half or so, we were able to increase from 200% ROI to almost 600% ROI. And uh, it does take a lot of digging. It does take a lot of brain work, but that's what I love doing. And if anybody is interested, you can find different case studies on our website. And uh, we try to explain different kind of how we got there. That's an incredible achievement. 600% ROI, is that what you said? Yeah, it's uh, wow. like right under six hundred. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's uh, that's incredibly interesting. Um, no, it's it's funny you brought up that quote. Like, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And uh, yeah. I think the approach that you were using was more. Um, it reminded me of this um, this process that this uh, that the Japanese came up with in the nineties for um, automobile mm -hmm. manufacturing. It's called uh, prevention before detection. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think I, I think that that, that kind of sounds like the approach that you were using here. <laughs> In this sense, uh, you know, the, the whole, if it ain't broke, don't fix it idea. If, if that was the case for everybody, there would be no innovation. We'd be still driving Ford T50s or whatever they were called, those old first cars, you know, the, the first, first cars. There yeah. would be literally no innovation. So yeah. it, it, it works, definitely that approach works, but that's not, what we are here for. Uh, we're here to to make things that are already good, great, uh, or even better. Absolutely, absolutely. On the topic of paid advertising, uh, talk to us about the goals that B2B marketers should be setting and what metrics should they be measuring? This one is a very easy answer on the surface. But when you start digging, it's not as easy as it seems. And the metric I believe in is what I call a pure ROI, a return on investment. When I mean pure, it means after basically like a net profit in a sense. So uh, let's say you are not you, you have never done as a business owner, you have never done any marketing and you have fairly successful business and all you do is, uh, I don't know, let's say sell products on, on the 
street corner type of thing uh, in a little shop. And all you have is just people walking in, buying your ice creams or something and uh, going on their jolly path. Now, if you've never done any paid advertising or really any other marketing, you might be still turning profit and it's okay. Now, somebody came to you and says, you know what, you can double, triple, quadruple your business, but you have to spend in marketing. The Typically, whenever you talk about marketing campaigns and ROI, the only thing people look at is what they call kind of like a return on ad spend, meaning if I spend $100 on uh, my, my ads or advertising, do they get more than $100? And, and then if it's, let's say, $101, everybody's happy. That is so incorrect. What you have to think about, okay, let's say your advertising budget is, uh, or advertising spend is $100. Well, did you think about paying, maybe hiring somebody else to manage it, right? So did you add that to your costs? Did you, let's say, if you, if you did hire somebody or hired an agency, uh, let's say if you hired somebody internally, did you think about uh, their like health insurances and vacation pay and uh, expense on extra electricity and buying some kind of desk and, you know, stuff like that, small stuff that typically business expenses, basically, uh, all those things are not considered. Other things that, that definitely definitely increase your actual cost are maybe you have to outsource some kind of landing page development. Maybe you have to do uh, content writing, whatever all that stuff is, most people forget about it. They just look at the actual advertising spend and if they got more money out of it. And it, as long as it's literally by $1 more, everybody's cheering. That is not the approach you should take. It should be it should be, you have to look at that pure ROI after all of the expenses are, and even like things like, for example, cost of goods sold. If you're selling some kind of a part for, you know, whatever that part is or product, it costs you as a business to, to um, produce that part. So you have to in include that too, because if you spend $100 on, on advertising, and then you sold hundred and two dollars in products. Well, it's not like hundred. Literally, all of the sales are net profit. You have to spend on the cost of goods sold and keeping the lights on, and so on and so on. So this way, you start losing money before you realize it. And that's when I say pure return on investment basically pure net profit after all of the spend. That's the only metric that makes sense in the business world. Definitely, there are other types of campaigns like brand awareness and whatever else. But at the end of the day, even if it's brand awareness, it's definitely going to be a long-term investment. Uh, but at the end of the day, you still have to look at, is that increasing your bottom line? that's the only question in business world. The rest of this stuff does not matter. Short term, sure. Long term, absolutely not. Um, so yeah, there you go. That's the main metric. Okay. Well, that was a that, that was a really great answer. And I and I thought that was a really um, apt comparison, you know, like a gross versus net profit. And the way that you broke it down into such detail, it pretty much sounds like that, you know, you, you touched on things like overhead, um, third third party, like if you're if you're engaging a vendor, for example, right? right. So, okay, um, Dimitri, give us something actionable here, right? So, because this is also part of what the show is about. So, what can B two B marketers do right now to improve uh, their paid advertising? Uh, there are so many different things I can talk about that for two weeks straight. <laughs> uh, but tying back to the previous hmm. question and answer, go ahead and calculate that pure ROI because you go to Google and Google ads, let's say platform, and then it will tell you return on ad spend. And it might be positive. You get in more in terms of sales than you're spending. But again, just look at that pure ROI. You have to make sure that you are within your margins net margins and gross margins and so on and so on. So that's a very simple thing you can really quickly do maybe with your 
depending on the size of the team, your business owner, your um, accounting team, whoever they are. And uh, yeah, if, if, if you see that you're losing money, well, pause the campaign right now. Okay, that's, uh, that's pretty straightforward. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. As you as you're well aware, paid advertising has changed so much in the past few years, and it's important for B2B marketers to understand how these changes will impact their work. So, and you've brought you brought up a few things, but what are some of the current trends in paid advertising that you think B2B marketers should be aware of? Right. So, over the last uh, maybe year or so, especially Google and really everybody they are pushing more and more of that AI, the artificial intelligence and automated strategies and all that stuff. And uh, unfortunately, they kind of forcing you to use it almost in a sense, especially Google. And as, as a marketer, I, it makes me very sad because I see the difference with the, the performance of those automated campaigns and they're just not good. So, um, it does seem to be like that's a trend in not just paid advertising, but really marketing in general, a lot of automation, a lot of, you know, AI and whatever else. And that's what I'm seeing being used more and more and it is being pushed more and more. And um, that's unfortunate and it does seem like it's in definitely it's definitely in our future. The only thing is, you have to if you use those, just be very very careful. And maybe if you're not if you don't have to use them, don't use them. And again, just don't rely too much on on those. So yeah, that's the trend that I'm seeing pretty much everywhere. And then the other thing, especially in Google, the other types of marketing, paid advertising, like Facebook or social media, anything like that, it's not going to be connected, but anything with search engines, uh, there is a heavy push within the last year or so on really it's all about user experience. So if your website is loading slow, if your website looks really horrible on mobile mobile devices then you're gonna get not penalized but it's gonna cost you more basically so you need to make sure that all of that stuff is taken care of that all of the technical stuff uh, they call they're called core web vitals that's one of the metrics recently google started paying heavy attention to but in general user experience how what and how what happens to users when they go to your website and how they behave on that website after they 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 go to it after they land on it okay okay i mean those are those are some great insights and that was a great segue into the next question which is uh kind of interconnected but what do you see as the biggest challenge uh in paid advertising uh, for b2b companies right now PPC at paid advertising again is not the best channel. It's just in terms of advertising, in terms of marketing, it's not the best channel. So the the biggest challenge that I see as a agency owner is is it's kind of difficult to explain and and show the differences or or get across that why the reasons the, the reasons the paid pay advertising is not the best and uh, unfortunately for a lot of especially bigger companies when the commands when the decisions are made by not marketing people um, they don't know the ins and outs so they they, they just say well we're going to spend a million dollar on paid advertising and then two thousand dollars on organic which does not make any sense so that's the biggest challenge realization of importance of different marketing channels of how to spread or divide the marketing channel between those marketing channels uh, the marketing budget between marketing channels and where and how to utilize all of those campaigns 
in the best way possible so that they work together in the most efficient way. So I would say that that's the biggest challenge of, in short, underutilizing other marketing channels or certain marketing channels. And at the end of the day, it also needs to start with a with a strategy of some kind, right? And an understanding right. of like, okay, so uh, why are we doing paid advertising? Is is you know, um, wh where does where where does our target audience go to look for information, or what are they looking for? Right, right, right. yes, yeah. In in terms of just uh, strategy, absolutely, you, you have to have a strategy. Without it, it's not nothing is going to make sense. Yeah. Uh, whenever I talk about the strategies and kind of business growth and stuff like that. The, the analogy is very simple. It's, it's as if you were driving without a destination, the, the journey might be fun, but you might never get to destination, which actually you should go to, or it's going to take you like Moses 40 years. You know, uh, he didn't, he didn't have a map of the desert. So, uh, yeah, it's we, we, the strategy is basically a map. That's that's all it is. And if you don't have it in front of you, if you don't have it set, then you're just gonna you're asking for trouble. Absolutely. Okay. So here comes the bonus question, Dimitri. All right. If uh, you had, and uh, and of course this will probably never happen, but just in case. If you had 10 times the marketing budget you had right now, mm -hmm. what would you spend it on and why? Uh, it's going to definitely depend on different businesses. Mm -hmm. um, but at the end of the day, the answer is actually very simple. I would invest it in the most efficient marketing channel. That's all there is. And for each business, that channel can, can be and will be different uh, because industries are different audiences are different and so on okay all right uh, so dimitri thank you so much for coming on the show today so uh you know please do us the honor of uh introducing yourself and uh letting people know how they can get in touch with you of course yes yeah. so my name is dimitri kustov as uh, it's been said earlier i am the founder of regex seo we are located in houston uh, we are a full service digital marketing agency and if you would like to reach out to me directly, you can find me on more or less all social medias. My handle is at Digital Spaceman. You know, we're in Houston. Like the, like the guy in, in like the back. the guy in the background, <laughs> yes. Uh, you know, we're in Houston, so NASA, mm -hmm. space. Mm -hmm. the, the whole idea of digital marketing is to reach new heights, reach new horizons. Um, so yeah, at Digital Spaceman on social medias. And you can always call us or... Uh, send us a message on the website, regexseo.com. Fantastic. Fantastic. Dimitri, uh, thank you so much for your time. This was such a great conversation. Um, take care, be safe, and I'll uh, talk to you soon. Yeah, thank you so much. It was very, 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 very much fun. And uh, in the future, I hope we'll have this conversation again. Absolutely. All right. Take care. Bye for now.